Good morning everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this video. In this video, we look at the derivation of the ellipse area. The formula for the ellipse area, the derivation procedure using integral calculus, we know the area of an ellipse is given by AB pi, or you can say pi AB. A representing here the distance from the center to one of the vertices, B is distance from the center to one of the minor axis endpoints. You know, ellipses have a major axis and a minor axis. If you compare a circle with an ellipse, and I'm just drawing here a representative horizontally directed ellipse, not vertical, because the discussion would be the same. If you compare a circle with an ellipse, they both have a center. But if you draw two transverse axes in a circle perpendicular to one another, both of these diameters are the same. We know the area is just pi r square area for the circle. If you draw two transverse axes in a ellipse, one ends up being a major axis, one ends up being a minor axis. The distance from the center to one of these vertices would be an A. The distance from the center to one of the minor axis endpoints is a B. If you think about the difference between this and this, literally speaking, the real difference is only if each of these represent an R. Each of these could be thought of as an R, but they're not really. I'm just talking about for discussion's sake. If they were literally equal to R, if A was equal to R, B was equal to R, and it would only be in the case where you had no difference in the major and the minor axis. All the transverse axes were equal to one another. In this case, the area would really be just the same as the area of a, of a circle, pi r square. But the fact that you have a major and a minor axis, what we really end up having is area is equal to pi ab. So if you can do the derivation procedure for this pi r square, it is not much of a difference to look at that same procedure, but within this anatomy that will arrive, so there's really not much conceptual difference between pi r square and pi ab. There isn't, and you'll see that in this video. Whether you look at the derivation procedure for a horizontally directed ellipse or a vertically directed ellipse, or procedure in which you're doing integration with respect to dx or integration with respect to dy, you know in each of these instances here you're solving for y equals equation, here you're doing x equals equation, here you have an interval that is in the minus x to x format. Here you have an interval that's minus y to y format. So you can have a variety of combinations that can arise. Whether you're looking at a horizontally directed ellipse using dx or dy, or whether you're looking at a vertically directed ellipse using dx, dy, it doesn't matter which orientation you take, your end result for, for the formula derivation should still be pi ab. We're just gonna look at one form, and I believe we'll take this one in the form of dy. We're looking at a vertical axis, but for a horizontally directed ellipse. That's what we look at, a horizontally directed ellipse integrated with respect to dy, and we should still arrive at pi ab. So we've been posting a lot of videos recently about integral calculus in terms of areas and derivations, and the reason I'm doing that is just to give you further appreciation and understanding of how integral calculus techniques work, and we will be learning the actual techniques of the variety of functions that exist out there and the various integration techniques. Those videos are are on the way. So this here is an equation for a horizontally directed ellipse. If you were to look here in terms of dx, and I said we would be looking at in terms of dy, but I'm just talking about this. What you would do with this equation first is you'd come up with a common denominator and you'd have x squared b squared plus y squared a squared is equal to one. I'm just setting up the equation form which will take us through either of these routes. Integration with respect to dx or integration with respect to dy. You have to take the a square b square on the other side. You have x square b square plus y square a square is equal to a square b square. Now, if you were to go down this route, you would have to solve for y. You'd have y square a square is equal to a square b square minus x square b square. You'd solve literally for y. You'd have a square b square minus x square b square over this a square and you would root it. If you come down this way, you're going down this way, you have to solve for x square component. You have x square b square is equal to a square b square minus y square a square. And then here x is equal to root of a square b square minus y square a square over b square. And each of these can be simplified by bringing out commonalities. y here is equal to, you can bring and isolate a b from the top. You have a b square going to a square minus x square divided by this a square in the bottom which is still under the radical. Here you have x square isolating from the numerator a square. You have b square minus y square over b square. And then you can still say and bring out the common terms 
in terms of their roots b a radical a square minus x square here you can bring out x is equal to a over b b square minus y square and this will be presented integration with respect to dx this will be integration with respect to dy if we're doing integration here in this video with this this will be our equation which we will integrate and it doesn't matter whether you're using this, whether you're using these, these letters are flipped. Your end result is still the same. It doesn't matter whether you're using horizontal or vertical. Everything is still the same. Just things flip around, but you still go through the natural progression of this procedure. And you know we're looking at a horizontally directed ellipse, which would look something like this. We'll have minus A plus A. We'll have plus B minus B. Since we're going to look through this technique and integrate with respect to dy, our interval will be from minus B to plus B along a y-axis dimension that's what we're going to be looking at and you know the equation of course for this right here where you have solved for either x and y it was for a half at the end you have to do the times two to multiply and capture the other portion which is not being included in your function or your equation that's being integrated lastly as i mentioned before if at any time i have this pop up co cosine squared theta in terms of integration which leads down through two paths I'm only going to take one path because the other path is going to take down and go towards a zero in terms of end result and that's the path which will look something like this integral cosine 2 theta d theta over 2 no matter what the coefficient here is and assuming that these intervals when you took the antiderivative of this or the integral of this giving you the antiderivative in terms of sine everything would zero out then we won't look at this instance we'll only focus here on this other part so in this video we're going to be looking at this equation form and sending this through the integration procedure so in this last portion of this video we're going to look at the formula derivation for the area of ellipse we have the horizontally directed ellipse you can see vertices and minor axis and points we're just doing everything here with respect to dy integration with respect to dy therefore the equation is in the x equals format and i've shown you previously how we came about that the interval is minus b to b what is our formula going to be to calculate the area formula for this x equals equation is going to come right over here a or b into b square minus y square dy a and b are coefficients which can be brought out a or b we have minus b to b and then square root of b square minus y square with respect to dy remember this equation represents this part right over here at the end we must take our answer multiplied by 2 to capture everything at the end in terms of the missing portion we must do that when you're here at this step you're thinking about a trigonometric expression which you will learn a is equal to b the only reason why i'm talking about a here a represents a, an item that you look for in a trigonometric integration technique uh, this a does not correspond to this a i'm just using that as a letter another type of a and let me give it a symbol of this a with a circle around it this is equal to b right over here y is equal to b sine theta dy is equal to b cosine theta d theta substitutions lead to new intervals theta 1 and theta 2 you've seen this now a few times everything is with relation to this equation right here these represent your y values y1 lower limit y2 upper limit which you place into this equation and solve for theta when you do this you get minus pi over 2 and pi over 2 you're just taking these y values and making them equal to this and you solve for theta so your equation gets rewritten into this form a or b from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 and you have b square minus y square which is b square sine square theta outside you have b cosine theta d theta when you simplify this part from here you isolate a b square and you have 1 minus sine square theta you see this frequently this becomes a square root of b square cosine square theta by virtue of the trigonometric Pythagorean identity the square root of this is a b cosine theta which multiplies with this b cosine theta and you get a b square cosine square theta all of this melts into a b square cosine square theta so this right here is the expression which has to be integrated we can bring this b as a coefficient outside because it's a b square it's a coefficient this right here is a variable we can bring this out we have a b square over b from interval pi over 2 to minus pi over 2 cosine square theta d theta and this is what i was talking about this can go down through one of two paths you have one plus cosine 2 theta over 2 
we're only looking at this portion right over here this portion right here cosine 2 theta over 2 will get removed and we won't look at that because it would zero out down in the integration procedure and you'll see this frequently enough that you can do this shortcut we're going to break this cosine squared theta using the power reducing formula into only one expression we'll ignore the other one a b squared over b becomes a b the b's cancel out you get a b from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 then we're only looking at this 1 over 2 d theta the other part i'll write it out but we'll ignore it we'll ignore this part right here because by means of integration and its antiderivative down with the intervals that will arise minus pi to pi because these intervals will change by means of substitution with this composite it'll all zero out we're only looking over here this over 2 can be brought out when you bring this over 2 out you have a b over 2 the integral of 1 over 2 d theta or the antiderivative is just a theta over here because the over 2 has been brought out from pi over 2 to minus pi over 2 when you do the integration of this pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2 a direct integration procedure technique that you have to learn the end result of this is a b pi over 2 but we still have to account for this times 2 to capture the other part of this area which is not being examined by this procedure you just multiply by 2 and the 2's cancel out and you get area over here is equal to pi a b which is basically the area of an ellipse shape the area within that demonstrated by pi a b and that right there is a derivation for the ellipse area formula had we done everything with respect to dx we'd be using the other formula as you remember and i showed you the other y equals equation which would go down that route if you were to do that as i was saying you do integration with respect to x you do from minus a to a you do the function equation for that and you do it with respect to dx this right here is not a function because if you look at this curve right over here it doesn't pass a vertical line test you can call it an equation it's not a function but when you do with respect to the x your ellipse equation in terms of this radical when you solve for y y equals you have something that looks like this and you're looking at the area of this this curve over here of course is a function because it'll only cross a vertical line it'll only cross at one point but you would go down this route and you'd still end up with pi a b as the area of the ellipse formula that's it for this video thank you for watching have a nice day